Imagine you're a fighter pilot flying a mission over enemy territory when you hear a voice on the radio announce a missile launch. There's no target identified and the shooter doesn't even announce who they are or where the missile is going. All you know is there's a missile in the air and it's going after someone, possibly even you. That's a pretty frightening scenario. Unfortunately, I've seen this happen a lot in sims like DCS. But the good news is that there's a way to prevent this problem using good communication. So how do you make your BVR communications more useful? Keep watching to get that answer. To better understand what's going on, we need to look at the root of the problem. When we hear FOX3 on the radio, we know that a missile with active radar homing was fired from somewhere. We covered this brevity code briefly in an earlier video. But just letting everyone on the radio know this one detail only reveals the homing type. Not who fired it or who it's being fired at. So it could be here, or here, or even here. No one knows if they may be the accidental target of this shot, or if an enemy group is being hounded for them. Both of these things are important to know because it affects their odds of surviving the mission. Effective communication enhances everyone's situational awareness. So we want to say things on the radio that improve everyone's understanding of what's going on. We never want to say something that leads to more questions than answers, like an ambiguous fox call. In BVR, the process of good communication starts before a missile is launched. It begins with the brevity code of targeted. The targeted brevity code is a simple way of letting everyone know that a fighter has acquired a signed group and has assumed responsibility for it. And in its simplest form, it sounds like this. Eagle 2, targeted West Group. This works if everyone has a shared battle space picture like what you get with the data link. And if you don't have a data link, then you could add on a bullseye reference like this. Eagle 2, targeted West Group, Bullseye 27015. We covered bullseye references in this video, so if you haven't seen it already, go check it out. If we do things this way, then everyone knows immediately who is being targeted. It's important to communicate this detail because it's likely that a BVR missile shot is coming soon, and this gives everyone involved a chance to react. So let's say that this group needs to be targeted and there are two DCA caps nearby. You wouldn't want both flights leaving their cap stations and burning limited fuel to do the same intercept. So communicating target responsibility ensures that only one flight leaves their station. Let's take a look at another scenario. Here we see a friendly strike package is returning to this area and it gets mistakenly identified as an enemy. Identification and why a mistaken ID can happen are covered in this video. In our scenario, a targeted call on the radio lets them know immediately that interceptors are coming for them. Now they have a chance to identify themselves to the interceptors before a shot is taken. With a targeted call, we assign responsibility for a group. But what about individual contacts within a group? That's called sorting. Let's go over how that works. Some jets have the ability to automatically sort targets and display it on a screen with lock lines like this. But even if this feature isn't available, it can and should be done manually as part of a mission plan. Before a fighter flight even takes off, they'll brief a plan for sorting contacts within a group. This will be an agreement among flight members on who should take each of the contacts in a potential target group. It can be as simple as a mnemonic like lead takes lead left low. This would mean that in the event of a hostile group being in lead trail formation like this, then the friendly group's lead would focus on the hostile group's lead. Then friendly flight members would just take additional contacts in order, so number two would take the second and so forth. Now let's say the targeted group is in a formation like this with two contacts at the front. Since our mnemonic is lead left low, we would take the second criteria, which is left. So the friendly lead would take the contact on the left, and two would take this one on the right, then three would take this one, and so forth. Sorting can be done any way the flight lead sees fit. And as long as it's worked out in the briefing, it's easy to take care of in flight. Once a flight has targeted a group, then each wingman can make a quick radio call to indicate they've sorted. And then they're done. But this isn't the only way to do it. If a flight encounters a situation they didn't plan for, 
the flight lead can call out sorting assignments like this. Eagle 2 sort right. Eagle 3 and 4 sort trail. Now the flight is sorted and ready to take their shots. Now let's go over how to do shot calls the right way. Here's the definition of the Fox Brevity Code. As we mentioned earlier, it's not particularly useful without additional information like the identity of the shooter and who the weapon is directed at. So something like this. Eagle 2, Fox 3, West Group. But you don't need to end there. If you really want to ensure there's no ambiguity, you can add amplifying information like this. Raptor 1, Fox 3, Lead Group, Bullseye 125-27, 29,000, Track North, Hostel. Not only do we have a group label, but we have a bullseye reference, altitude, track direction, and a PID. There should be no mistaking who is being shot at here. Shot communication can also be combined with targeting and sorting. So it could look like this. Rambo 2, targeted, Fox 3, sorted Eastern, West Group, Bullseye 27015, 20,000, Strength 3. I know that's a lot of words, but it makes it absolutely clear what's happening. There should be no question about who is shooting and what the target is. Now I want to mention a version of the Fox code I don't see mentioned very often. It's what gets used when multiple missiles are launched and it's described like this. What we see here are two ways to communicate multiple launches. When you use the second prefix, it means an additional launch against the same target. So it would go like this. Eagle 2, 2nd Fox 3, West Group. This is what would follow if an initial weapon missed, or if the pilot simply wanted to increase the probability of a kill with an additional shot. The other way to indicate additional launches is with this suffix. So if Sword 1-2 was targeting a pair of hostile aircraft, the call would go like this. Sword 1-2, Fox 3, 2 ship. This would assume one missile per target and it keeps the pilot from making repeated fox calls. Now I know that was a lot of info, so let's do a quick recap. We use targeted to take responsibility for a group of radar contacts. Within that group, contacts are assigned using the brevity terms sort and sorted. Once ordinance is employed, then we have the fox term to let everyone know who the shooter and target are. In all cases, it's important to add amplifying information. This means adding important details that can build a good picture of what's happening. Even though modern combat aircraft have great situational awareness with tools like Link 16 data links, we have to remember their limitations. This display does not show missiles in flight. That information has to be conveyed over the radio. For my DCS players, I know this can cause a problem because you're often flying solo or with just one friend. In those cases, proper brevity isn't so important and solo players don't need any brevity at all. When you're flying with only one friend, you can skip the call sign because you know who's talking. But this can build bad habits that will carry over when you play with larger groups. So it's a good idea to practice proper brevity even with just one wingman. Now there's another problem that can happen in BVR, and it's a radar screen that looks like this. There are both friendly and enemy aircraft on this screen. So how do you figure out who's a valid target? I have an entire video dedicated to answering that question and you can check it out here. And as always, I hope you learned something from this video and thanks for watching.